And we are back. Wildfires seem to be getting worse and worse every year. You know this. There's plenty of discussion on the impact of climate change and how we as humans can help. Joining us now to talk more about wildfires, Crystal Colden, a fire scientist at UC Merced. Dr. Colden, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. What is a fire scientist? Uh, <laughs> Well, generally, I, and my, my self-appointed term, I guess, is pyrogeographer, uh, which sounds much cooler. But, but generally, I try and understand how fires burn, uh, where they do, why they do, when they do, and how it affects people. All right, so we're going to tap into your expertise now. In the past few years, California certainly has had bigger, more frequent, and more destructive wildfires. Uh, it's never just one thing, of course, but what are the main factors fueling these fires? Well, California has always had a lot of fire uh, historically be before uh, Europeans colonized this region. There, there was a lot of fire in California. And what we're seeing in recent years is really a function of returning to uh, the fire that was always here and then amplifying that with climate change. Uh, so the increases in, in heat, the longer droughts, the uh, delay of the rains coming in the fall that Californians always look forward to, all of those things are contributing to these sort of larger, more explosive fires. All right. Well, if we were to cut our fossil fuel use, how quickly would we see a difference? Uh, unfortunately, uh, it would be a while. Um, the, the challenge with climate change is that uh, things pretty slowly change. So the things that we're seeing right now in terms of hotter temperatures and changes in precipitation, those are all a function of uh, the carbon that we've been emitting into the atmosphere for decades. And even if we cut all of our emissions tomorrow, it would be a while before we'd see those changes. But for my kids' sake and for my future grandkids' sake, uh, I hope we find that a worthy goal. We should certainly still try, right? Uh, has our forest yeah. management approach also contributed to this? The biggest thing in terms of forest management is that we had enormous amounts of fire suppression throughout much of the 20th century. Um, and that suppression led up to a lot higher density of trees in the forest than were there historically. Uh, and then you add that to a five-year drought in California between 2012 and 2017, and, and now a lot of those trees have died uh, and become fuel for these fires. So it's really a major change, and, and the, the trees alone might not have done the trick, but with climate change amplifying it, uh, that is really the confluence of those two things that's making these fires so problematic. Well, you hear about states doing prescribed burns. Uh, does California not do enough of them? Uh, the key with prescribed burns is that they have to be done in the right place at the right time. And if that happens, they can be incredibly effective for reducing the amount of dangerous fuels on the ground, restoring the health of these forests mm -hmm. so that the trees can more easily resist future wildfires. And California has really not done a lot of prescribed fire, uh, especially not compared to other places in the U.S., like the southeastern U.S., where they do a lot. And if we did more... Some of the modeling that's been done on this by other scientists shows that it would actually really reduce the number of trees that die and the severity of these wildfires. All right. So that's a policy issue, right? Um, okay. How about where we build our homes? Is that contributing? Well, where we build our homes uh, contributes to how much we're sort of in the way of these fires, right? Um, and there have definitely been some calls for not allowing people to build in fire-prone areas. Um, but conventional wisdom in natural hazards says, well, we build in a lot of places where there's natural hazards. San Francisco sits on a giant earthquake fault. Um, and what we've done is sort of mitigate for that danger through engineering. And we can do the same thing with fire. We just haven't gotten that far along yet. Okay. Um, so what do you think? I mean, collectively, on a policy standpoint, what kind of things can we do to try to reduce wildfire risk and damage? So there's a lot of things that we can do right now, right? For individuals who are worried about uh, having to evacuate or seeing their homes burn down, uh, you know, they can do a little, a lot of little things right around their homes to reduce fire danger. They can harden their homes and they can join projects in their community to try and reduce fuels. Okay. And um, what are other good options for subdivisions, for example? 
Yeah, so for communities more broadly, they can develop community wildfire protection plans if they don't already have one. They can become a FireWise community. This is the program from the National Fire Protection Association that helps communities prepare for wildfires. Uh, and people can start thinking uh, across bigger landscapes about supporting prescribed burning and other types of activities that improve the health of forests, improve the health of shrublands and grasslands as well, uh, and actually reduce that future wildfire danger in addition to supporting national and, and local policies to actually reduce the impacts of climate change. All right, Dr. Colden, on this show, we try to bring in some viewer questions, and here's one coming in from Tri Win Duong, uh, who wants to know, what if we made homes that are fireproof? Is that starting to happen technology-wise? Yeah, so uh, fi fireproof is, um, I, I wish there was a, a definition of what that looks like for wildfires, but what we do know is that there are a lot of uh, building materials, roof materials, siding materials, landscaping materials even, uh, that are incredibly resistant to igniting. And so as people are rebuilding or building new homes, when there's new construction in many of these fire prone areas, they're building their homes to be more resistant to having embers land on the home and ignite because that's how most of these homes ignite. So a lot of those materials are actually already in existence. It's just really expensive to upgrade existing homes, uh, and that's what makes it prohibitive for some people to do that. All right, well, Dr. Colden, it certainly sounds clear that there will be more wildfires. That's unavoidable. It's how we handle them, how we manage them to minimize the destruction and damage. Uh, really important. All right, thank you so much for sharing your insight and having this conversation with us. We appreciate it.